Item number, SCP-507. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-507 is allowed free roam of the facility, obviously barring anything that would breach security or safety protocols. Anytime SCP-507 leaves its private quarters, it must be accompanied by an agent, mostly at this point to make sure that it does not shift without the facility's knowledge. SCP-507 should not be physically touched if there have been more than two weeks since its last shift. The risks inherent in disobeying this protocol make the action its own punishment, should the issue of disciplinary measures ever come up. When SCP-507 undergoes a shift, faculty will be informed to keep an eye out for its eventual reappearance. It also has a tracking device implanted into it, and a daily signal check should verify whether or not SCP-507 has returned from its trip. If it reappears in or nearby the facility, SCP-507 will return to its quarters on its own. Otherwise, a retrieval team of three plainclothes agents may be sent to provide transportation back. Upon successful return, SCP-507 can be the subject of various physical tests, up until two weeks after each shift. It is worth noting that SCP-507 is allowed a computer with an internet connection, via a proxy which strictly limits what information can be uploaded and to where, in its room, and may petition to use slash meet with or act as a test subject for safe or Euclid SCPs that do not affect mental functions negatively or carry an infectious trait. This is a result of SCP-507's persistently clean record and the implication that if SCP-507 was ever going to be a security leak, it would have used its faux teleportation powers to do so already. It is also worth considering that SCP-507 is actually below average in most physical traits, and that in even worst-case scenarios, any SCP agent should be more than capable of carrying out a termination order. Description SCP-507 is a Caucasian male with blonde hair and green eyes, sporting no other outstanding characteristics besides being somewhat overweight and speaking with a vague accent of disputable origin. Although SCP-507 has an already established name due to its unremarkable upbringing, it seems to find entertainment in forcing those it meets to give it a nickname in lieu of divulging this information. Thus, SCP-507 will now respond to the names Tommy, Steve, Bruto, Guy, Houdini, and Grabnock the Destroyer. SCP-507 was originally recovered from the Asylum, when standard surveillance following repeated successful escape attempts brought its abilities to light. All records of this incident were confiscated, and SCP-507 was taken into custody under the pretense of moving it to a more secure facility. The original theory was that SCP-507 possessed some form of teleportation ability, as it would suddenly disappear and eventually reappear in a different location. Subsequent interviews with the subject did verify that its ability could be used in such a manner, but that it was merely a side effect for its main affliction. SCP-507 holds that during its periods of disappearance, it is actually displaced into a random alternate reality. The landscape generally stays the same, but the inhabitants and climate of the parallel world often do not. SCP-507 also insists that it has no control over the time and duration of these shifts, this has more or less been confirmed by the subject being known to displace at inconvenient times, such as mid-sentence, while sleeping, or even while using on-site public facilities. If SCP-507 moves about in the alternate world, the eventual shift back will then place it at the corresponding area in our reality. A sample list of SCP-507's descriptions of alternate realities can be found in Document 507-00. Mentally, SCP-507 shows no large deviations from the psychological profile for a normal person. It has confessed to have always had a great interest in the paranormal and mythological, which has directly led to its eventual permission to interact with relatively harmless SCPs. SCP-507 especially enjoys meeting with other sentient SCPs, once going so far as to request a small vacation to visit SCP-82. The request was eventually granted after persistent pleading from SCP-507, 
and the meeting was, thankfully, uneventful. Document 50700, a sample list of SCP-507's supposed extra-dimensional travels, along with any demands made by it after returning. Subject arrived in complete darkness, leading it to assume that the current location was indoors or subterranean. After fumbling about for a possible way out, Subject heard a sound akin to muted breathing nearby. Subject then decided to curl up in the nearest corner and wait it out, instead of risking a blind confrontation with an unknown creature. Request A standard flashlight, which it now always carries on its person. Subject appeared in a replica of the facility, although apparently fallen into disuse. Further exploration led to the discovery of various corpses strewn about the area, all heavily decayed and covered in an odd type of mold. Upon noting that the corpses seemed to rhythmically expand and contract as if still breathing, Subject attempted to leave the facility. This idea was quickly discarded when it opened an exit and found that the outside world was apparently coated with the same odd growth. Request Heavy doses of voriconazole and a fungal expert to help ascertain the nature of the mold. No exact match of the described mold was found, but it was noted to share many attributes with certain types of cordyceps fungi. See Addendum 5072. Upon reappearing, Subject was reported to mutter, So many spiders. Subject refused to elaborate. Request A handheld firearm of any type. Request was granted under the stipulation that said firearm is specifically built to only use rubber bullets. Subject once again appeared in a pitch black location with breathing nearby. Upon turning on its flashlight, Subject was surprised by a man wearing a black business suit and sunglasses with an impossibly wide smile. Said smiling man was apparently leaning in toward SCP-507 when it turned on the light, the end result being that their faces were almost touching. Smiling Man then remarked, Back so soon, before Subject switched the light off again, discharged all the rounds in its firearm at the general vicinity of the man, and once more curled up into the nearest corner until shifted back into our reality. Request None Those with Level 2 507 security clearance should also see Interview 507G for evidence of a particularly noteworthy shift. Interview 507G Interviewed SCP-507-A SCP-507-B Interviewer Dr. Forward During a daily signal check for SCP-507, two independent verifications were returned. The following investigation led to the discovery of identical SCP-507 duplicates in its assigned quarters. Both apparently made their way to the room by themselves and had spent at least half an hour conversing with each other upon meeting. The following interview took place between them and the first informed employee to reach their location. The duplicates have been each given an alphabetical notation for the purpose of readability. Begin Log 507A Hey Doc 507B Welcome to the party. Doctor I am afraid you are going to have to explain this to me. 507B there's apparently more than one version of me with this problem. 507A Should have seen this coming, honestly. There are so many ways an alternate reality could differ without affecting my personal life, you know? Doctor So, which one of you is the visitor? Roughly ten seconds of silence. Doctor Is something wrong? 507A We've actually been talking about this for a bit. Now, you guys have been real nice to us. 507B. More than we might deserve, really. 507A. But we also know that this could be a rather enticing opportunity for your research department. It'd probably be best if you didn't know which one of us was... Doctor. Temporary. 507A. Expendable. Doctor. I don't know what kind of stories you two have been sharing, but our job is to secure and protect the likes of you. Perhaps this other reality has a less benign code of conduct? 507B, and perhaps I can shoot fireballs from my mouth. 507A, we don't mean to be hurtful, 
But this place isn't the best source of human compassion. I'm sure that there's at least one person on staff who would love breaking me open in an attempt to find out how all this freaky stuff works, if it wasn't for the fact that you couldn't keep studying me afterwards. 507B. Do you have to put it like that? I have enough things that keep me awake at night. 507A. Good God, I know. Once there was this guy with a huge smile. 507B. You met him too? 507A. Nearly soiled myself. 507B. I wish I was that lucky. Doctor. You know, this could be interpreted as a security breach. 507B. Who's the doppelganger going to report to? Alternate SCP? I'm fairly sure that there's a better chance of a meteor striking this place than successful cross-dimensional sabotage. 507A. I've actually come across at least three dimensions where something fell from... 507B. You're not helping. 507A. I rarely do. 507B. Anyway, where were we? 507B disappears mid-sentence. Roughly five seconds of silence. Doctor. Well, now that our visitor's left, I have a question. 507A. Alright. Doctor. Did you two figure out the difference between your realities? 507A. Actually, I think we did. In his world, Abraham Lincoln was killed while sleeping by his vice president, instead of by General Lee. Doctor. In this reality, Booth assassinated Lincoln. 507A. Oh. Bugger. End log. Closing statement. Subsequent testing revealed that SCP-507's abilities have no biological basis, and that severed pieces will still shift, along with the main body. The SCP-507 of this reality reappeared three days later, and has not been informed of this incident. Addendum 507-00 Agent went missing on expunged at the same time as SCP-507. A full-scale search was launched to find either of them, only for SCP-507 to appear a week later. When questioned, it said that was holding onto its shoulder when it shifted, leading to both of them to appear in an alternate dimension, where expunged. During the ensuing chaos, SCP-507 lost contact with and could not relocate him before it shifted back into standard reality. A new protocol has been placed in light of this. No one is to come in physical contact with SCP-507 after two weeks following a displacement. Re-evaluation of previous incidents has shown that there have always been at least two weeks between each, so this time frame will be the only safe time to touch SCP-507 until further notice. Addendum 507-1 I don't care how much he grumbles about it. SCP-507 is not to be cleared for challenging SCP-76-2 to 50 rounds of tic-tac-toe. Just... no. Dr. Addendum 507-2 Fungus encountered by SCP-507 seems similar to that resulting from experimentation with SCP-407. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-506. Instant Growing Plants, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.